what's changed in your view of your own identity maybe over the last 18 months since you've been jumping into this? Yeah, well, I, I didn't, you know, the, the reason I write my books isn't necessarily, you know, to be known as an author or anything. It's because I'm just, I, I really want to find out these answers for myself. So that mm. I suppose they really come from a very selfish perspective initially, but I started writing this book because I'd lost my own identity. You know, I, I didn't know who I was and it was really scary. I was drowning um, in the waters of the unconscious because um, I had nothing to cling on to. There was no ego, um, you know, sailing a, a ship or anything. I had no direction. Um, and, and that kind of happened um, when I stopped playing football, um, had found CrossFit, but it felt kind of like the shell of who I was with football. I felt so linked to football. Um, and then when I hurt my knee and moving overseas um and i realized that athletes and tom were no longer um you know linked i really because I, I just wanted to be an athlete my whole life you know mm. and then when my knee injury kind of got the better of me I, I really started to have to think about well you know this probably is impossible at least in the foreseeable future and i also want to go traveling and i fell in love at the same time and you know all these sorts of things so that wasn't i say it now you know, and it sounds so so simple, but it was very scary for a good couple of years there because I just didn't know who I was. I thought I thought athlete was me, you know. So I suppose the, the, the reason why I wanted to study this kind of stuff, which really is depth psychology, you know, getting to the root of who someone is, um, was very important to me because I felt like I was I was drowning. Um, you know, and it's different when, you know, some of the stuff I talk about in the book is, you know, the difference between like consciously deciding to take something on that is never inevitably going to change your identity. Like, you know, I can only guess that for you, for example, do like becoming a father, obviously it's a massive decision. Yeah. It's going to change your identity. There's going to be like a pre um, child and a post child experience in life, but you're also looking forward to it. Not discounting how bloody challenging it would be, but you were almost, you had that like, I'm ready to make this step, I suppose. I don't know. Do you, did you feel that? Yeah, probably, probably yes and no. And, and yeah. actually I, I think I felt like a lot of other guys out there um, who are like, yeah, I can probably be a dad, Yeah, but I'm not, I, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think like as, as males, we probably lack the same biological driver or, as females who oh. say, yeah, I'm ready to be a mum. Yeah. Um, and there's that, that biological sort of, stuff that's going on for them but like everyone that I talked to about it was like you're you're never ready mm. like you never you're never ready before they arrive and then they're here and yeah. you just have to do it um but uh, but I think as well like as you said it, it massively it changes your identity as well and it changes your perspective and like in essence, I'm still, I'm still the same person that I was before Connor arrived. Um, but I think like it, it, it's changed my perspective on a lot of things. It's changed my priorities on a lot of things. Um, and I don't know if this is kind of just natural evolution for me as well. Um, or if it's, if it's accelerated it, but it's, mm. I think it's probably accelerated, but it's made me much more aware and in touch of my emotions and what's driving them too. Mm. 